Welcome to Open Studio. This is Nuri Siddiqui and I have a very interesting topic for you today. The topic is living disease, pain and medicine free. Why is it today that 95% of the population appears to be sick? What are the sources of our diseases today? What are the origins of so many of the pain and discomfort that we are experiencing, which has become normal to most of us? So today we're going to take a look at how to live disease, pain and medicine free and what purging and purification can do to contribute towards that. My very special guest today is Imran Ismail, a purging and purification expert from Cape Town. And I'd like to welcome Imran to the show. Thank you for joining us, Imran. Yes, I'm very honoured to be able to have this opportunity to purvey the ancient wisdom. So I shall be taking full advantage, as you see, as we go through the program. Beautiful. Now, the words purging and purification indicate um, uh, an element of ancient wisdom within themselves, because even the concept today of purging and purifying seems alien to most people. Now, with the advent of so many diseases in our society today and the environment that we're living in, why is it even more necessary? What's actually going on that's causing us to live in pain, disease and uh, full of medicine much of the time? Well, when we speak of purging and purification, hmm. that is to do with cleanliness. And when you deal with cleanliness, then when you go throughout history of humanity, you go right to the prophets, you go to God himself, then you will see that, that, that they speak of cleanliness as next to godliness. They speak of cleanliness as half of faith. They speak of cleanliness is godliness. Right. So when you go there, then you are speaking about purging and purification. Then you need to speak about the opposite, which is uncleanliness. Yes. So you always speak of the contrast. So my sources of information are to do with the great pious ones throughout humanity. And when the Industrial Revolution took place, then you'll find the great pious ones, when they observed, they were horrified. Because when they saw the chimneys coming up and the factories mm. being built, then they spoke to everybody's grandfathers when they were small little children. And they said to them, beware. You people are going to get new, new diseases. There's no names made for them yet. And there also came the advent of factory foods, where we now have uh, white flours and white carbohydrates and additives and preservatives, chemicals, which we are ingesting. So where the food appears to be filling us, but yet we are malnourished at the same time. Well, in total, with the advent of the Industrial Revolution, we have 500,000 chemicals that we are subjected to, mm -hmm. that is foreign. And it's foreign matter to the body. It's inorganic, it's not organic. Yes. So it's plastic, the body cannot digest it. So it's in our food. For example, when we eat food, mm -hmm. and all the great ones, no matter what religion, somehow they spoke of eating from the tree. Yes. It's only when you eat from the tree, then it's God's food. The creator's food. Mm -hmm. It's only when you take the food from the tree and you jump onto the other tree, which is a factory. That is a devil's food. Because in the devil's food, you have additives, preservatives, fungicides, pesticides, colorants. Those are foreign substances. Many of these uh, uh, substances are banned in Europe. It's illegal. It's not fit for human consumption. So in other words, when we eat from nature, the food is alive. But when we eat from the factory, then it's been plundered and murdered. So it looks like food, but it doesn't give us life. Therefore, it will cause horrendous havoc in the body. So that is why I do the world behind the skin, mm. the world underneath the skin, the world inside the skin. For the world is there to the great ones. That the mind is behind the skin, your thought processes, your movies are made there. Mm. Your heart is behind the skin, your emotions are there. And your physical being is behind the skin, that is where your engine is. And that is what I am going to deal with now. I'm going to concentrate on the engine to see how we need to keep this engine running. Now, don't we produce much of our toxicity because we're talking about over 500,000 chemicals in the environment, but alone in the body from negative thoughts and stress, we also cause havoc, don't we? Yes. So when you want to go to speak about uncleanliness, then you've got to go to the world behind the skin or cleanliness, mm -hmm. the world behind the skin. The first way that the body inside 
becomes unclean mm -hmm. is and you dirtify your blood, your five liters of blood and your 15 yeah. liters of lymph fluid. That is a human being's swimming pool. Yes. So when you see a sparkling blue pool, you'll see it inviting and it's being tended to. But if you do not tend it to it, then it starts turning color. It starts turning green, algae, molds, fungi, bacteria, even tadpoles grow inside. So the same thing happens to the blood and the lymph fluid inside. So it's the 20 liters of biochemical fluid that I'm going to be speaking about inside the body. Right. That is your river. That's your five liters of blood and, and your 15, 15 liters, liters of lymph, lymph fluid. Now so what, what does the lymph fluid do? The lymph fluid is, is there to be able to take the nutrients to the cells. Mm -hmm. That's one. Mm -hmm. And it's also supposed to be taking the uncleanliness, the khokhajis whether it's viruses, fungi, molds, bacteria, candida, medicinal residue, metal toxins, mm -hmm. away for elimination. So that must, uh, must have a pH of 7.4. So in other words, keeping it a condition where the body can continuously rejuvenate, not degenerate. Keeping it a condition where life mm -hmm. and you grow fit, strong, vibrant. Mm -hmm. So that is where the origins of disease is. So this uh, pool of water, we're talking about five litres of blood and 15 litres of lymph. Yeah. I'm thinking of an aquarium while you're talking. Yes. Because if that environment of the aquarium it goes just a little bit out, then all of a sudden the fish get sick and they die very quickly. Absolutely. And if you take a person who is on chronic medication, for example, mm. if you do a pH test on his saliva, mm. it usually will be at about 6.4, 6.5, 6.6, .6, yes. somewhere around there. And the pH of the blood and the lymph fluid must be 7.4. Right. If it deviates from there, you are inviting disease so and degeneration. That's also the same as a swimming pool, isn't it? Absolutely. So the moment it's even slightly acidic, then it will go green. That's right. So that indicates what happens inside the human body. So the first way that your swimming pool inside the body, behind the skin, becomes unclean is when you eat food. Yes. When a human being eats foods from God's tree, which is which is from the tree, from nature, from nature yes. or from the ground, yes. then everything is perfect. Mm. When he jumps from there to the factory, additives, preservatives, fungicides, pesticides, then he causes horrendous havoc in the blood and the lymph fluid. They move mm. just to show you how, how destructive this additives, preservatives, fungicides, pesticides and colorants is. They moved one grave in Greece. Greece is a country. They moved this graveyard. So they dug up the bodies. When they dug up the bodies, they found that these bodies were intact. They did not decompose. Everybody got very excited. They thought these were holy people. Mm -hmm. So they made a beeline there. The scientists also got there. Mm -hmm. And they cut a little bit of tissue. And we are made of cells, 75 uh, trillion cells. Cell, cell, cells, like a computer screen, dot, 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 dot. So they took a little bit of tissue to see under the microscope, why are these human mm -hmm. beings not decomposing? And then they saw the cells were, were preserved with preservatives. These human beings today th that are dying, Cannot, are not biodegradable, yes. they are not green, they cannot go back to dust to dust. I believe also there was a research study done on some uh, plasma where the liquid was kept clean. That is one of the, uh, the, the, the plasma, uh, one of the greatest medical experiments does, done in the history of humanity was done mm. in 1912 by Dr. Alex, Alexis Carroll. What he mm. had done was he took a piece of heart tissue from a chicken. Okay. And he took this piece of tissue and he put it in its plasma. Mm -hmm. And then he, in the same conditions as the body. And then of course, when he did that, he saw that this heart tissue was beating. And it was fascinating because mm -hmm. it's out of the body. Mm -hmm. And then of course, he observed it. And as he observed it, he saw that this heart tissue, the, the beating was subdued and to subdued. And eventually he realized that the plasma is unclean. So in other words, there's uncleanliness there. Mm -hmm. So he changed the tissue. And he bathed the tissue in, 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 a, in, in a solution. The plasma, and of course, and yeah. the plasma, the, the, the heart tissue in mm. a solution. Mm. And of course, that thing started beating. So he did that every 48 hours. Normally, a chicken lives for, nine, for five, between 5 and 10 years. This piece of tissue lived for 29 years. Wow. And of course, the only way it died is when the individual forgot to change the plasma. Incredible. So what yeah. he deduced was that the cell is immortal that as long as it's fed and kept clean, that it can go on living. So, so it's a tissue around yes. it that becomes unclean and that degenerates the cell. So we're talking about <clears throat> the health of the individual cell. We're talking about the five liters of blood and the 15 liters of lymph.
Yes. And um, uh, then beyond that, of course, we still have the uh, storage of toxic residue in the body. I believe we have 9 to 22 kilos of toxic residue that we can store in the body today. And if we look at how society is appearing and is behaving, we seem to be overfed, overweight, malnourished, and uh, sick, so that doesn't seem to make any sense. There's no shortage of food, but yet we have more problems than uh, when there appeared to be only just sufficient food. Well, the nine to 22 kilograms of muck that's mm. in the body, three to seven kilograms of it is in the colon. Mm. The colon is one and a half meters long, it's thick as your fist, and it's supposed to be working optimally, in other words, evacuating regularly. Right. And the rest of it is in the 100,000 kilometers of piping that a human being has in his entire body. That will take you around the equator twice, around the earth. Mm. So the 100,000 kilometers of piping must be whistle clean, yes. just as when you were born. So I'm speaking about how all this becomes unclean. The first so, way is when you eat food from the yes. factory. The second way is when you have negative thoughts or when you are stressed. And human beings today revolve around stress. It's unprecedented in the history of humanity. And when you are stressed, then you release a chemical called cortisol. Yes. And that is very good. If a dog is chasing you, you'll jump over the highest wall. Mm. But not if you're sitting in a car and one taxi comes in front of you, you unsettle, you'll release this cortisol, and that will create a shower on the blood, a shower on the swimming pool. Mm. And that, that's unused. It's like sprinkling acid into the pool. Yes, that's going to manifest itself into disease. Right, so that's the breeding ground of disease because now the pH is out. Absolutely. Right. So just as this additives, preservatives, fungicides, pesticides, colorants needs to come out because it's uncleanness, mm -hmm. so does the cortisol needs to come out. So that's the second way that the blood and lymph fluid becomes unclean. The third way it becomes unclean is when you have food. Uh, sorry, I beg your pardon, not food. That's the first way. Mm -hmm. The second way was, was when you are, are, are stressed. Mm -hmm. The third way is, of course, when you have medicine. Now, where I come from, my ancestors come from a place in India called Kerala. Mm. Kerala is one of 32 states. It's in the south. Right. And that is a heartland of natural sciences. Mm -hmm. And of course, when the British went there in 1757, the first thing they did was ban natural sciences. Mm. And then they asked the old people, what is it you do for a headache? What is it you do when your daughter's uh, stomachs are cramping? The old people took them to the tree, took the bark, either crush, uh, crushed it, either ate it or drank it. Mm. And then the British tried it and said, hallelujah, this thing works. And then they looked at the tree and it's 200 years old. And of course, then they decided, no, we can't wait that long. Let's go and duplicate it. Right. And so they, then they went into the laboratory and they duplicated the tree. They made man-made chemicals that the body cannot digest. Right. And they made the first tablet six years later. So in 1763, the first tablet was invented. It was called aspirin. And then they went, and then eventually the pious ones, the great ones, the truth seekers were observing this whole circus, mm. they called it. Then they, the British came to them and asked the pious ones, why do you sit and do nothing the whole day and play with your beads? And then the pious ones said, yes, we do nothing, yet we do everything. And then they asked the British, what is it you are doing? And the British says, no, we are duplicating the tree to feed the animals and the human beings. And then the pious one said something very, very pertinent mm -hmm. that's very applicable today. Mm -hmm. They said, you are only taking the intelligence out of the tree. You are leaving behind the wisdom. Mm. If you feed any living organism that, you are going to create havoc in the body. That's very and that is why you'll find that, that because I'm thinking of the viewers that are watching, that they all come from very strong cultural backgrounds, yes. where wisdom was an innate part of their upbringing. Absolutely. Purging and purification was a normal thing to do. Definitely. And, and that was in times when we didn't have all this toxic bombardment. Yes. So what you, we were also referring to the 100,000 kilometers of piping where yes. a human being could actually go twice around the equator. Yes. Now, what, what also seems to be happening is that there are builds up of plux and calcification yes. in that piping. So whether it's arrhythmia or whether it's um, uh, an extended colon or whether it's uh, indigestion or whatever the case is, but the body's malfunctioning at so many levels yes. because the toxic residue cannot be broken down in the body and is lying around a dormant and creating more and more chaos. So the purging and purification is not something that, oh, well, that sounds like a good idea. It's actually something that sounds very essential. Yes, absolutely. 
So this medicinal residue, they call it, mm. and if anybody's on medication and they take a piece of white paper out of the box mm. and they see that it's got side effects, yes. that that residue goes into the blood and goes into the lymph fluid, it does one thing, yet it bites you in another way. Mm. So the first way that the blood, the, the blood and lymph fluid become unclean is when you eat food from the factory. Yes. The second way is when you have thoughts that are stressful. The, th the third way is when you have medicinal residue. The fourth way is when you breathe. And even the Queen in England breathes. When you breathe, then you breathe in things from the air. Right. And in the air, there's car fumes, carbon monoxide. And in there, there's a, one of the worst inventions man ever made in the history of humanity, mm -hmm. which is lead. Lead, when you go and put pe full petrol, it's leaded petrol or unleaded. Mm. Lead, when you breathe it in through your nose, you cannot urinate it out, you cannot defecate it out. Mm. It stays in the blood. Then it looks for all its cousins. And when you're going to eat your... Uh, <clears throat> but you're touching on a major issue there because you've got mercury poisoning, cadmium, arsenic. There's so many metals and other toxic residues that are just go soaking into the body every day that we're not aware of. Absolutely. This mm. lead will look for its cousins, like the mercury when you got inoculated, mm. like when you eat your acne or your biryani or from copper or aluminium pots. Those are metals. It goes inside. Mm. When you put one deodorant under your armpit, that's 400 chemicals, mm. foreign part of the 500,000. Yes. One of them is silver. The body, the skin sucks it up into the blood. And then eventually all these metals play and they do something they're not supposed to do, which is go and permeate the blood-brain barrier, mm. BBB. The blood-brain barrier is there to, for protection. So it permeates it. Then you find our children, our grandchildren, and that's who I do this work for. Mm. It's because it's their birthright to live pain-free, tablet-free, disease-free, no matter where the body is. Yes. The body will always want to go back to its natural state. All you need to do is purify and purge. And I'll speak about that later. So, so, to, these, so, to, so, these, so to summarize, it's about what you're eating, breathing, drinking, thinking. Absolutely. That's what it's all about. Mm. So when, you, uh, when these metals permeate the blood-brain barrier, you'll find all neurological dis diseases taking place, mm. autism, uh, bipolar, mm. schizophrenia, mm. Parkinson's disease, uh, all illnesses that are unnecessary and mm. that's brand new and mm -hmm. new. All that needs to happen to these people is that uncleanliness cleanliness needs to come out. Right. These human beings wash the clothes every day because it, it, it gets mm -hmm. dirty. Yeah. They wash the house every day because it gets dirty. Who washes inside every day? Uh, the other thing I just thought of there is that, say for example, we, used the, uh, we were talking of the dirty swimming pool earlier yes. in the program. Yes. Now, if you were to simply just pour water into that pool, it's not going to come clean. No. If you've got an aquarium with dying fish in it, it's not going to come clean by just pouring water in. No. So the biochemical uh, pH in that environment has to be restored. Well, that's what I so do. So what, what does the purific purification and purging do to facilitate that? And, and tell us more about that. When you purify, when you purge mm. all these foreign substances out, when you get your pH of your blood and your lymph fluid correct, mm. you shouldn't have any aches or pains. You shouldn't. It's your natural state of being, wellness, joy. That's how God operates. That's how he created the body. But you're speaking of purging and purification, but today it appears to me that people don't even go to toilet properly. Well, that's the other way that the blood and the lymph fluid becomes unclean, mm. the fifth way. The fifth way of becoming unclean, your blood and your lymph fluid, is when a human being does not, is not consciously aware of how the colon works and how important it is to release or to defecate yes. or to do number two. So when the pious ones throughout the centuries, when they observed all the animals, whether it's a giraffe, rhinoceros, cat, dog, they noticed that they all take 30 seconds to release, mm. do number two, or defecate, 30 seconds. Human beings are supposed to be faster, sharper, brighter, maybe 29 seconds. And they described it, it must be mm. soft, it must float, it mustn't be hard, it mustn't be compressed, it must not sink. There must be no grunting and groaning, there must be no reading of magazines. So if, if a human being doesn't go to toilet on time, does that get absorbed back into their blood? Well, you see, our young pretty daughters and our handsome sons have got a new style these days. Mm. They dress pretty, they dress smart, they go to the cousins' houses, they won't use the toilet. Mm. They'll wait for the golden toilet at home. Yes. They sleep overnight, they won't use the toilet, they'll wait for the golden toilet at home. So I have an ana analogy for them. That if it's 10 o'clock at night and the bed is very warm and they're in the cuddly pajamas and they've got a piece of Kit Kat, sitting here at the bottom waiting to be evacuated. Mm. If they've got a piece of stool sitting at the bottom waiting to be evacuated mm. and they decide to wait for the morning, 
The analogy that I use is that, will, that piece of Kit Kat or stool will disappear into the blood. Now the five liters of blood is not a toilet. That's horrendous. Yes, you are yeah. messing up, it's called toxemia or, 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 or auto, auto intoxication. Yes, yes. So it seeps through into mm. the blood. Mm. Now, firstly, you've got, you've, you, you've got additives, preservatives, fungicides, pesticides in, in, in the yeah. blood and the lymph fluid through your eating, remember? The second way I said to you, when you are, are, are constantly stressed, worrying about something, being anxious, being nervous, being unsettled, mm. being overwhelmed. The third way, it will release cortisol. Mm. That goes into the blood. The third way is, of course, when you uh, uh, breathe. And then you've got all the metals. The fourth way, of course, is when you have uh, uh, medicinal residue, when you're on medication. The fifth way is when you have, you're not regular with the bowel. Now that, of course, eventually what happens in the blood and the lymph fluid, it's a biochemical fluid. All these, these hojajis, I call them. Yes. They start making glug, 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 glug. Now, they Imran, start I, want, I want to uh, stop you a little bit there because we're coming to near the close of the program. We've got about five minutes left. Yes. And I just wanted to, I know um, that there's something very fascinating that you do and you work with the three biorhythmic cycles in the body where that's a part of the pur purging and purification. And you actually teach people how they can do this for themselves and to create a lifestyle which is conducive to the whole family's well-being. So uh, tell us more a little bit about that so that um, people can actually go and find out more and do something about this. Yes, I will do that. All I need to do is finish my story on uncleanliness, mm. and then I will show you how to be clean. Mm. So uncleanliness is to do with all these chokhajis in the blood and the lymph fluid. Eventually, mm. this biochemical fluid, this 20 liters, it starts making glug, 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 bubbling. Right. Then it, st it starts wanting to come out of the body. Yes. Then it will look for that human being's weakest door. And if that human being's weakest door is his lungs, it will want to burst its way out of there or accumulate. They'll call it asthma, or bronchitis, mm. or pneumonia, or emphysemia. The name doesn't matter, it's uncleanliness. So any disease is a dis-ease? Yes, Jesus yes. Christ said, put it well, cleanse and purify mm. thyself, and I shall exalt thee to the throne of power. So that's how it wants to burst its way out of the lung, they'll call it those names. This, you, then you'll see it wanting to burst its way out, if your skin is the weakest part of your body, mm. you'll see it leaking out, you'll see it coming out, they'll call it uh, eczema or psoriasis or pimples or acne. Mm. Nothing is wrong with these human beings, it's uncleanliness. The third way is when it, you see it coming out through the nose, it'll leak out. Mm. You'll see it coming out. They'll call it sinusitis and all the, I, I, all the other itises. Mm. And then, of course, if it's a head, it'll want to burst its way out of there. They'll call it migraines and so forth and so forth. Yes. So the names of the diseases or illnesses does not So matter. you're talking about it's the source. It's uncleanliness. I'm yes. talking about the source. I'm talking about the origins. The cause. Now, mm. to bring a human being back mm. to the natural state, which is the birthright, to live pain-free, tablet free disease free you need to purge and to purify mm. that is very simple that 9 to 22 kilograms of muck that you have in a body mm. needs to be eliminated mm. that is what you carry that's all the so if people are wondering why they're overweight they must think of that first so there's it, more issues with that 9 to 22 kilos of toxic weight in people being overweight than them worrying about being fat it's the toxic residue they need to it's be focused on it's the toxic residue so yes. i do not speak about losing weight Mm. What I do, it's a natural side effect mm. of a human being losing weight. It's a natural side effect. The 9 to 22 kilograms need to come out. So the first thing they do is to have what I have is a natural thing called the husks. Right. Where it softens, loosens and gathers the stools. Right. These have got, this is an amazing thing. Mm -hmm. Because it's ancient, it's old and even it's a, not, not a laxative. It's natural, it makes your stool soft mucosal mm. when you go you will have a fulfilling experience yes so it's a noble to provide experience. ease of movement ease of so movement. you can go in those 20 seconds you can go into those, those 30 seconds maybe yes. 29 because you're sharper faster brighter than animals mm -hmm. so that's very important so that is nursery level school stuff to 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 repair and fix yes the ne the, the other one is to be able to clean purify purge uh, the chokhajis from the blood and the lymph fluid. Yes. That day we have something that's ancient and old that's been cooking and bubbling underground for millions of years. When it's ready, then it comes out of the bowels of Mother Earth mm. as a volcano. Wow. That red hot lava. Uh -huh. When that is dry, then it's an ash and that's negatively charged. Right. 
All the Khokhajis that are mentioned that's in the blood and the lymph fluid, that's foreign, additives, preservatives, fungicides, pesticides, colorants, medicinal residue, Metals, metal toxins, yeah. um, candida, viruses, fungi, bacteria, yes. all that is positive. So this acts as a magnet mm. and with the husks, they remove it. So the regular use of that every day actually sucks it out. Well, you wash your clothes every day. You yeah. wash your house every day. You need to wash inside every day. Yes. So I, I educate. 95% of my work is educating. Mm. And my consultations are free. Mm. Education is free. So you cannot charge for consultations. Mm. So everybody is welcome to be able, if they are wanting to live in pure health, in yes. other words, in the absence of disease, now, I believe you also travel and do this work, Imran, and uh, do, do people come to you for up to seven days where you can teach them and show them as well? I travel to educate, and mm -hmm. those who see sense, those who want to live in the absence of disease, whether mm. it's physically, emotionally, or mentally, mm. because this is the body that harbors their soul. Mm. And the soul is what they want to look after, yes. and it must be in a clean environment. Yes. So I educate them, I show them, how to eat from the tree and how to be able to, to, to have the food, which is the medicine, and medicine is the food, to be able to take them wherever they are mm -hmm. and to move them to a better place. Even if they're on lots of medicine already, it doesn't matter. What I have mm -hmm. works with the medication. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you'll see once they eliminate, they purify, they purge, the, uh, the Khokhajis. But it seems to me that what you're doing most is creating awareness and shifting consciousness so that people live consciously, they get that what they are eating, drinking, breathing and thinking is the source of their diseases. And if they're not purging that out and if they're not purifying the blood and the lymph, then they're the breeding ground of disease. This is so simple. Mm. All that they do is for the children and grandchildren and of course for themselves. Imran, we need to wrap up now. Well, then they, they need to contact me if they, yes. if they see value in what I'm speaking about. Yes. If they're wanting to know more, if they want, to, want me to go to any other country in the world, mm. if they're wanting to me to be a guest at any school, mm. at any university, mm. at any college, to be able to educate our children and grandchildren, that's Beautiful. what we do the work for. Lovely. To be able to live pain-free, tablet-free, So how can they contact you? They must phone. I, I'm based in Cape Town, but mm. I, that does not mean I, I travel mm. everywhere else. 021 683 mm. 1866. Lovely. 021 683 1866. Or they may phone me on my cell phone or send SMSs 072 310 4009. And your email? Ismail, I S M A I L dot I M R double A N mm. at gmail dot com. So Good. those who uh, are searching for the truth, mm. who are searching for answers, who are there to, to be able to help themselves to mm. light their own candle hopefully eventually light other people's candles, mm -hmm. then we are, I'm the sort of person who Lovely. are there to be able to ignite that. And, and you also make yourself available for up to seven days at a time where people come to you on a daily basis just to absorb and to create the lifestyle that goes with that. They are welcome to live yeah. with me for seven days. We mm -hmm. will educate them. I will be able to create awareness in their head. Mm. They don't need to stop doing anything. No one in the history of humanity stopped doing yes. anything. It's only the awareness, which is the greatest vehicle, would be able to take them where, the, where they need to get Thank to. you so much, Imran. That was very, very valuable. I'm very honored and I'm and very And I trust that the viewers will take value from that and uh, feel inspired because we all have the right to live disease, pain and medicine free. Bless yes, you. Yes, bless you. That brings us to the end of the program. That was my very special guest, Imran Ismail, a purging and purification expert. This is Nuri Siddiqui for Open Studio. Until next time, take care and God bless.